Hey guys, this is Anime Ball Z here, and today we are going to be doing the third part of What If Goku Had a System. Please like the video if you haven't already and subscribe. It's totally free and you can unsubscribe whenever you want. There's nothing much else I'd like to say in the intro, so without further ado, let's get into the video. Slick talker since the jet. Winter time, all the time, oh, yeah. Look at the way that I move, swag. Disrespectful and I'm rude, okay. I had cocaine in the school. With Freezer dead and gone, Goku and Raditz see no need to meddle on Planet Freezer 79 any longer. It's only a matter of time before the death of Freezer spreads and the Empire crumbles. As for now, Raditz knows that under Goku's protection, he has literally nothing to worry about. They head back to their pods and just head back to Earth, while Vegeta is left rather directionless. Raditz has left him and he killed his most loyal comrade. He is on Planet Freezer 79 just to see what happens and he sees half of Freezer's palace crumble from Goku's exceptionally sharp Sadala Slash. What did that Saiyan just do, Vegeta wonders, upon watching the ensuing chaos in the surrounding streets. Quest complete, technique acquired, technique death beam. A thin, extremely fast beam of key that can be used to pierce through almost any object explodes upon after piercing through the maximum amount of material. Item upgrade, item level 4 champion gi. A special golden gi that can be worn by the user, it's a one size fits all gi that is lightweight and provides the user with a 3 times power boost. It also triples the user's durability stat, while the user wears the gi it provides a healing factor to slowly heal them from injuries and does so by feeding on the life force of the opponent. With Freezer gone, Goku's life pretty much returns to normal. He spends a lot of time fighting his brother Raditz and sees him making astounding progress. Raditz is still extremely far off his level and Goku can keep him down in his sleep. It would literally be impossible for his brother to hit him. With his champion gi, it basically makes every punch not hurt at all. With his significantly enhanced durability, he doesn't even need to evade the attacks that come his way. Gohan also trains with these group of fighters and since he is much weaker than the other two, he can also make a lot of progress. Goku can see that his son has a lot of potential, but it won't be likely that he will ever exceed his strength if he has this system as an asset. It just wouldn't make sense where he has access to things like special potential amplifying seeds and trainers like the Saiyan God Yamoshi himself. During these three years, Vegeta is off planet and is training as hard as he can. He trains in a similar way to how we did in canon, breaking his limits and just trying his hardest to surpass Goku. His power grows significantly and in a fit of rage the Saiyan Prince manages to acquire the power of Super Saiyan. Years and years pass, approximately 3 years and Goku has managed to access the powers of Super Saiyan 2 and 3. However, he doesn't like the forms at all, they seem to lack lustre for his liking and Super Saiyan Omega is a much safer option for him. Also, when he meditates, he has started to hear quiet whispering like people are talking to him. It's quite odd and he can almost make out what some of the people are saying. The most common word he can definitely hear is saying, but it's always mixed in with unintelligible sounds that he can't discern. Goku, while meditating, starts feeling the key signatures of several humans falling. He can tell the exact area where it's happening with his superior key control, but he can't seem to find the culprit of the loss of human life. It's like it's being done by an invisible force, he decides to fly right over there to see what the issue is and he soon finds the two androids, Android 19 and 20. Who are you two? He asks cautiously. The fact that they seem so strong but you can't sense any key from them is alarming to him. Even when people try to suppress their key, he can still sense something. These two people feel like hollow beings, almost like reanimated corpses. Upon closer inspection, he sees the logo of the Red Ribbon Army on their bodies and is very shocked upon seeing this. He thought that he had destroyed that evil organisation a long time ago, but it still seems like they have managed to live on in some form. Android 19 speeds toward him, but Goku doesn't get hit at all. He evades the incoming punch by stepping back before landing a kick to the side of his body. Goku's power level is 30 million, so his power simply doesn't do much. A punch then lands on his forearms, launching him across the street that they're in. The Saiyan then enters his basic Super Saiyan form, then charges forward with his newfound speed. He speed blitzes the android after this large 50 times multiplier of his and slashes at the body of the android using his Sadala Slash. His wave of golden key slices the being right in half and he turns to Dr. Jiro after dismantling this being so easily. I never would have thought you could defeat that android so quickly. Oh well, Dr. Jiro then says, before flying off surprisingly calmly. Goku charges right after him, but Jiro then shoots back literally hundreds of key blasts in flight to try and annoy Goku. They surround him and he is forced to destroy a large number of them before he is free to follow the man once again. With his greater perception, he can hear where Dr. Jiro is headed and arrives right at the scientist's lab. Landing there, he tries to inspect the surroundings and can hear the conversation going on inside the lab from the outside. He places his ear on the exterior of the lab to try and figure out what's going on. 
He can hear two androids that have appeared out of nowhere and he decides that it's time to try and finish them off before these two can cause any harm. Before he can even transform into a Super Saiyan though, the door gets blasted right off. There stands Android 17 and 18 and these two androids are much more powerful than their canon counterparts. Goku gets attacked by these two but he catches both of their punches before they can do much. Android 17 takes another swing at his body but Goku slips past his punch to then kick in one of his knees. Dr. Jiro knows that Goku is insanely strong but it's very hard to gauge just how strong the guy is. He barely ever reveals his full strength and only does so in physical solitary training. He evades the numerous attacks that are shot to him from the androids and he then lifts into the sky. The two androids follow right after him but he shoots a Sadala slash at the two incoming androids. The slash is so fast that he nearly takes the androids out right away. Seventeen is caught by the incredibly sharp slash of Ki and ends up having his right arm cleaved right off. This slash of his doesn't even deform and then slices off a large amount of matter on the ground once it hits it. Seventeen is in utter agony after receiving such an attack. He is a cyborg and so has some human parts to his body. This makes the attack hurt really badly but he remains resilient as these two warriors have been hardwired to try and take down the man in front of them. Stay back, I don't want to have to kill you both, Goku pleads as he can see there is human in them. Seventeen bleeds from what he can see and they fight in much more human ways than the other fighter that he had dismantled minutes before. There is no use in trying to sway us, we have been programmed to try and kill you Goku, it's the only thing that drives me now, Seventeen declares, shooting toward him with a roar using his only free arm. As he approaches, Goku uses his precise strike skill. Time almost dilates and he aims straight for his skull. The punch launches the android down to the ground and from his lack of movement he seems dead. 18 rushes in to try and attack Goku but she meets a similar fate, falling from the sky after receiving a punch straight to her face. Goku feels bad that he has been forced to do this looking down at their lifeless bodies. However, he knows it's for the best. The first android that he defeated had massacred tens of thousands of people. These two androids were much stronger than that other one and so anything could have happened if they were released. Goku returns to his base form and prepares to leave but then notices another fighter standing before him. Yamoshi, he wonders looking at them. No, not Yamoshi. I am a super powered warrior born from your DNA and his godly essence, this being explains. He looks like Yamoshi facially but he is a much bigger version of him. He also seems to have some form of mechanical mask over his face. He resembles Kumba from the Dragon Ball Hero series as reference. We haven't met before so allow me to introduce myself. I do not go by Yamoshi but instead by the title Android X, the title given to me by Dr. Jiro himself. Dr. Jiro upon seeing Yamoshi's godly saying key from the ring of Yamoshi and his physical body felt inclined to utilise that DNA and power of his. He saw how strong he was and simply didn't want to miss upon the opportunity to improve the abilities of his androids. How do you exist? Did Dr. Jiro create you from scratch? Goku asks. Goku is smart enough to quickly realise that Dr. Jiro is the man that he had seen previously. He assumed that he was an android, which he was, but he acted differently to the other androids that he had met. He also heard his voice within the lab when he activated 17 and 18. Yes, the special key from that ring had healing properties and so Dr. Jiro was able to use that to accelerate my growth from a single celled organism into the super being that I am now in just a few years, he exclaims. His most prized, most powerful creation made solely to wipe you from the face of the earth, he shouts before charging right at Goku. The Sadala slash is launched in his direction but he flies right over it and punches Goku. The Saiyan is taken aback by the force of his strike but doesn't feel pain at all due to his champion Gi. He then evades a few more of the attacks that come his way before being caught by one and launched right into the ground. He lets his body descend and in doing so gracefully lands on the ground. Android X lands ahead of him and looks more than ready to continue their battle. Goku can feel a sense of hate and fury coming from his ki. His ki resembles the ki of Freezer that just seemed like pure evil. As he is standing there, his vision seems a little hazy and he almost falls right over. He keeps himself standing up and to an observer it doesn't look like much has happened. However, his heart starts to feel achy and this is due to the heart virus that he has contracted. The pain is dull at first but he can manage it quite easily. He then decides to take this up a notch and enters his Super Saiyan Grade 3 state. Combining his Akari form with his Yamoshi Ki, he achieves the power of Super Saiyan Omega. His power level reaches much higher levels and something special starts happening. His God Ki is amplifying the healing capabilities of his mystical champion Ki and this starts directly combating the heart virus inside him. Goku speed blitzes him and swivel kicks the burly warrior right in his jaw. Goku then blocks the next attacks that come his way before landing a kick to the large warrior's stomach that forces him back. 
from training and sparring, he has found that with his champion Gi, he finds it easier to just block attacks than evade them. His durability is augmented substantially and so he can take the attacks from those that are of even equal strength to himself. After taking these attacks, his enemy looks furious. He can see that his eyes are bloodshot and he can hear a vehement roar even under his metallic mask. He charges at Goku and throws down both of his arms like a savage ape, but he can take the attack again. Goku is in a powerful muscular state and so he easily overpowers his enemy. He pulls his large arms downward before headbutting the man and punching him straight in his jaw to launch him back tens and tens of meters. He is sent rolling and crashing through the rocky ground and Goku stands against him ready for him to attack again. Goku feels confident, but he then remembers that the Saiyan standing before him is still in his base form. This surprises him quite a lot and he starts walking toward him. He begins shouting and his long hair lifts and flows in his aura, his eye colour switches to blue and his hair then becomes blonde. He enters his very own Super Saiyan state and smiles upon feeling the power coursing through his veins. Here we are, prepare for death Saiyan, Android X shouts, shooting a large gold key blast at Goku. He smartly uses his Hadala slash and launches it right at the blast. This slash bisects the ball of energy, causing the two fragments to soar past his arms. They explode behind him and Android X then charges at him. He closes the distance between him and his opponent in nearly an instant and the two enter intense hand-to-hand -hand combat. Goku spends his time blocking most of the attacks protecting his person, but his punches and strikes deal very minimal, unnoteworthy damage. He tries to punch the tall Saiyan in his chest, but his fist is then grabbed. The android pulls him forward before landing a vicious kick to his gut. Goku feels totally winded and is then lifted off his feet to be slammed right back into the ground. The ground quakes from the heavy impacts and Goku coughs blood as he hits the ground. He must use all of his strength and effort to then dodge the attack that is hurdling toward his head. He pushes himself out of the danger zone, returning to his feet with blood dripping out his mouth. Android X speed blitzes Goku while laughing. He feels like he can finally complete his goal upon seeing Goku so injured by his attacks. He throws haymaker after haymaker that Goku ends up being forced to tank. His durability is enhanced but it simply isn't enough. In such a bulky form like this one, he has decided to try and fight the same battle as his adversary. However, without power comparable to his, he is now fighting a losing battle. His vision looks hazy and doesn't move along with his own movements. He stumbles to the ground, pushing himself up with one hand. Then Android X cloaks his left hand in his own key. Dashing forward, he stabs Goku just under his ribcage, aimed upward. Goku coughs out an alarming amount of blood as this stab pierces right through his lung. He trembles and hyperventilates upon feeling the massive keyblade in his chest. Goku can barely move and can't even begin to try and remove the energy blade from his torso. I told you that my mission is to kill you Goku, why do you look so surprised? I was not built to fail, he shouts, pushing the blade further into his body. Goku screams in pain upon feeling this and his key signature starts dwindling rapidly. Training with his nephew Gohan, they both come to a stop upon feeling Goku's key signature declining. What's happening, Gohan asks, while Raditz looks out in the distance. I'm not sure, but I don't like this feeling. I'm going to check it out, Raditz says. Wait, I'm coming with you, Gohan says. No, kid, just stay back here. There's no need for you to put yourself in danger like that, his uncle insists. Gohan then shakes his head before stubbornly following after Raditz, who looks like he is about to leave. No, I'm coming with you. He's my father. I want to help however I can, Gohan declares. Raditz just stays flying there and looks at his nephew. He can see the strong will from his unwavering gaze and knows that there won't be a thing he can do to convince him to stay away. Fine, come on. Android X rips the blade from Goku's body and he flops to the ground powerlessly. His eyes motionlessly look out into the distance and the Saiyan is covered in a pool of his very own blood. As he destroys the energy blade, he can feel a slight weakness in his breath. The android is confused because he believes that he is a perfect creation. His breathing rate shouldn't be this high even after he had been standing relatively still for so long. His energy blade fades and Goku then places his hands on the ground. A volume of Yamoshi's key floods out of his ring and starts to cloak his body. He reverts to perfected Super Saiyan and his red aura looks a lot denser and stronger than usual. 30% he screams internally, making his body buff up significantly. He roars from the power coursing through his veins and charges right at the android. He ends up coughing more blood from the intense strain he is placing on his body but he needs to defeat this warrior. If he does not do that, how can he ensure the safety of the people of Earth? He zooms toward Android X and clashes with him directly. Goku's hair has now turned to an orange colour, being mixed with the redness from his god key and the yellowness from his Super Saiyan form. Pushing vehemently, he tries to get this warrior to at least budge, but it's to no avail. 
he receives yet another punch to his stomach, then a strike straight to his face. Goku lands a punch of his own, but in the end, it still just isn't enough. He can't actually manage to overpower his foe that seems to just be growing stronger as he fights. He lands some good punches and kicks, but it isn't enough. Goku's body is weakening from the massive wound in his lower chest, and it's having a long-lasting effect on his ability to battle. His champion Ki and God Ki are doing its best to heal his wound, but it won't be quick. It also isn't easy when Android X repeatedly irritates the wound by punching it and using it to cripple his opponent. Hey, what are you doing? Raditz shouts, flying down to land beside Goku. No, Raditz, go, Goku insists, before coughing blood and stumbling to the ground. Android X is flabbergasted by Raditz's appearance and quite humoured by it too. He smirks upon seeing this happen and Gohan lands beside him too. He looks enraged to see his father in such a condition and looks frightened by the whole situation. His emotions guide him completely and he charges right toward the large warrior with a shell. His power has been elevated quite greatly by his anger and in his flight something amazing occurs. His hair switches to gold and he enters his Super Saiyan form for the first time ever. Striking the burly warrior, he creates a large shockwave and moves so fast that Raditz can't even track him but the warrior takes on his attack with utmost ease. Gohan then continues trying to attack him but the android smiles as he blocks or dodges each one of his attacks. No Gohan, Raditz get Gohan and run, please, Goku insists. Raditz can see that there is no use in them fighting and actually feels scared upon seeing this strong foe. He feels the same feeling that he did upon watching Freezer get angry at him. This sense of powerlessness makes him feel great fear but there is no time for him to mull over such matters. Now he has to try and save himself and his nephew. Raditz summons all the strength that he can and zooms right for the young boy snatching him. Gohan, please calm down and listen to me. We have to go now if you want to live, he shouts. Gohan is too blinded by his rage and hits Raditz in his chest, cracking one of his ribs. He then flies right back toward Android X who just backhands him straight across his face. The kid is knocked out with just that simple swipe of the arm and slides right beside Raditz with a massive bruise on his face. Android X turns back to Goku lifting his hand to face them. I'll slaughter those weaklings that you call your family, the android taunts as an energy blast grows in his palm. I tried to beat you and I couldn't. How does killing them help you achieve your goal, Goku asks, before coughing even more blood. Android X smiles upon seeing Goku so desperate to save his friend. He drops his palm before charging right at Goku and sucker punching him before he has the chance to properly react. He then creates the same dagger of key that he had done previously and stabs it right into Goku's chest, dropping him to the floor once again. Raditz just watches this happen with his eyes wide open from shock. He feels frozen as he knows that if he goes forward he would just be slaughtered. However, if he doesn't find a way to help his brother, he's going to die. Curse this weakness, he says in his mind, looking down at his own frail body. Finally, the job is done, Android X claims. He dusts off his hands and can see that Goku's heartbeat is steadily dropping. It won't be long before the man is dead. Android X just stands over him, smiling with arrogance as he has completed his mission. Goku is no more and his attempt at resisting him was futile in the end. In Goku's mind, all he can see is black, his eyes have faded out and there isn't much more time before it's over for him. What is this? Am I dead or dying? Well, I'm definitely dying, Goku comments, looking at this infinite void. Kakarot, Goku then hears. Goku then looks around, trying to find the source of this voice. Kakarot, you have the power to fight, so fight. Ascend to the next level, break your limits, he hears, from Yamoji who is now stood before him. Behind him, he can see several glowing eyes and outlines of silhouettes of varying heights, but all with the same hairstyle that resembles Vegeta's. But I lost. I'm literally dying now. I don't have much in me, Goku comments, defeated. He fought valiantly and with everything that he had, but was still defeated. What could he now do differently to change things? Use the ring. The ring has all the power that you need. Save your brother, your son, and most importantly, save yourself. On the outside, Raditz is still stood there, watching the android backing away from Goku with a smile. However, his smile suddenly fades. How? He blurts out upon watching him. His temperature is now rising steadily, plateauing at the regular body temperature for a Saiyan. 100%. His body is engulfed by the god key of Yamoshi and he rushes right back up to his face before lifelessly looking ahead. His eyes look dead but his wounds start healing swiftly. Goku roars at the top of his lungs and his hair then becomes red. It falls in the process as he starts using his first truly godly form. What is this power? Even after all that training I feel nothing, Raditz thinks upon seeing his gleaming brother. His eyes become the same colour and he charges at the android with his newfound strength. He utilises the Sadala Slash and it now looks stronger than before. It looks redder and swifter and Android X is forced to enter his Super Saiyan form to use all of his strength to try and evade. His arm is caught though and his right arm is severed right off. He screams in agony, holding the wound on his shoulder but he then uses the other arm to launch an energy wave right at the Lean Saiyan. 
However, he flies right over it and knees the burly Saiyan right in his mouth, destroying the mask covering his face. Goku then rains down a barrage of punches and strikes on him that simply break him apart. He continues to attack him and even when he powers back up into a Super Saiyan form he can't do much. As Android X charges right at him once again, Goku takes this chance to use his precise strike skill. This 5 times amplification to his power allows his fist to go right through the man's body. His arm totally impels his opponent and covers his arm in his own blood. Once he removes it, he can feel his body is almost totally healed, but Android X on the other hand is faring much much worse. He just looks up at the glowing Goku while coughing blood and cowering away. No, how, how, he states before finally kicking the bucket. He takes a final gasp and falls, laying in a pool of his own blood. You did it, you really did it, Raditz says, surprised with his brother's victory. Upon approaching him, Goku's body just starts to twitch, and he coughs out blood before dropping to the ground. Raditz looks a little taken off guard by his brother's suffering and rushes right to his side. What's wrong, Kakarot, he asks, with concern. Goku's body reverts to his base form and he feels great pain throughout his entire body. His muscles involuntarily contract, causing him to just end up flopping to the ground. What just happened to me? Goku asks his system. There was too much body flowing within the user's body and the user was saved by their own activation of God Key. It seems that he'd used way too much power initially, but using all of Yamoshi's key allowed him to gain his very own godly key. Once this happens, he sees the golden ring on his finger turn into particles of energy and just vanish. Raditz isn't really paying attention to that and luckily doesn't see it happen. Where did the ring go? The user has absorbed the god key from the spirit of Yamoshi. This has provided a significant boost to the user's base strength and potential. Hidden quest complete, Saiyan God, item upgrade, item, siphoning Royal Saiyan Relic. With the title of Saiyan God, the Royal Saiyan Relic item can now be used as an opportunity for the user to command the power of the Royal Saiyan. Summoning too much strength can cause grave effects on the body, including death. How could I actually use this? Surely the Royal Saiyans will be too weak to add to my power. The addition of power from this item is not a mere addition, but amplifies and multiplies the user's own strength. After hearing this, Goku looks up cautiously. He can sense the key signature of Prince Vegeta heading toward them. Over there, it's Vegeta, he says, pointing ahead. Wow, how did you tell that was Vegeta from just sending him? Raditz asks, stunned. It's just training, Raditz, Goku replies. Raditz, Goku and Gohan then fly over to the scene upon seeing him arrive. He smiles upon seeing Goku and doesn't even pay attention to the other two warriors that stand beside him. It's about time I get my revenge, Kakarot. Prepare to perish, he shouts, before powering up. You humiliated me once and I won't let you live to even try and do so again. He then roars more vehemently and enters his Super Saiyan form. Now I am the ultimate warrior, the Super Saiyan of legend, he exclaims. If it's a fight you want with me, Vegeta, then fine. Vegeta smiles, then flies right at Goku, landing his most powerful kick. His attack does nothing and he intended to try and kill the Saiyan there. He falls back in slight shock before rushing right back to throw even more attacks. They are quite simply relentless and he just continues throwing to try and take down this fighter. However, with his champion Gi, even though it is slightly ripped, there is nothing that he can do. His attacks don't even move the insanely durable fighter and he only causes further damage to his knuckles. The Saiyan Prince can't even stand to stop though, he just continues rattling off punch after punch, unable to accept defeat. Goku soon taps him on the neck and knocks him out right there and then. The Saiyan Prince has been defeated with just the wave of his palm and the Saiyans don't really know what to do with him. Raditz just says for them to leave him there and this is what they do. Vegeta does wake up and flies away from the scene upon doing so. As Goku is flying away, he receives another notification from his system. Plus one item, Saiyan Book of Legends number three, the power of the Saiyan God. A large tome appears in his hands and Goku is quick to hide the item from Raditz's view so that he doesn't alarm him. As they arrive back at his home, Goku starts to read the book and sees that it details several ancient fighting techniques and skills made by Yamoshi. They are mainly intelligent uses of God Key to make one an even more adept fighter and Goku can't wait to test these skills out and train himself with them. Now what comes are seven full years of peace. Vegeta ends up settling in secret on Earth, meeting Bulma and gaining a relationship with her. They end up having Trunks currently instead and Goku still has Goten at the same time as usual. This means that Goten is going to be significantly older than Trunks. Vegeta is still too hot-headed to train with the others and focuses on solitary training, gaining access to Super Saiyan 2. Goku ends up gaining access to Super Saiyan Blue and even Super Saiyan Blue Evolution on top of that. His Saiyan powers have grown tremendously and with the power of the Zenkai, anything is possible for the Saiyans really. Here, what is different is that Gohan can barely go Super Saiyan here against Kibito in the World Tournament. He feels immense strain from using the form, then Goku looks into the sky to see Yamu and Spopovich charging for Gohan. His incredible key control means that he can sense the two warriors from a great distance away. Goku flies right at the two warriors and stops them from advancing. What do you want here? Goku asks boldly. 
They feel surprised that they will stop so easily and they just go to try and attack Goku. The Saiyan evades their first attack before dodging a key blast that soars down toward the tournament. It destroys the arena and makes the people at the tournament distressed. Yamu and Spopovich fly right away but Goku flies right after them. As they return, Dabra appears to try and send Goku away. He shoots his special spit at him but Goku steps away and evades. It then heads toward Raditz and Vegeta who are behind him but they both then dodge the attack too and land beside him. What was that Raditz wonders, landing behind Goku? Vegeta lands crouched down with his forearms resting on his legs and his hands hanging down over his knees. What a weird looking demon, Vegeta states. Goku then shoots himself forward toward Dabra and lands a light neck tap. The sheer power behind his tap, even though he went incredibly light, nearly kills the fighter. Following this, the remaining fighters enter the spaceship and start facing the foes that Babidi pits against them. Vegeta ends up taking Pui Pui just like he had done before. He thinks that the 10 times gravity could give him the advantage, but the Saiyan Prince comes from a world where that is the norm. The marching warrior stands absolutely no chance against him. Goku ends up facing Yakon and like usual takes him out. However, he only needs to use basic Super Saiyan to give the fighter way too much light energy to try and absorb. He ends up killing the fighter and the final warrior is not Dabra. As they arrive at the bottom layer of the spaceship, Vegeta's mind starts getting attacked. Unlike before, Vegeta is still closer to his evil Saiyan self. He screams, holding his head, and everyone watches on in horror as Babidi starts taking control of his mind. Eventually, in Super Saiyan, he stands and faces the warriors. March and Vegeta is born. These fighters are transported out the ship and Vegeta's eyes are glued on Goku. He is here to battle him and doesn't want things to end like last time, loss will not be an option. The two fighters stand against each other for the second time and unbeknownst to Vegeta, the odds of this fight have somehow fallen even further out of his favour. So that will conclude the third part of what if Goku had a system. Please tell me something you liked about this video or something that I shall improve on for the next one. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.